it's it's really really neat, really um, impressive. Uh, you know, and the, 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 as I say, that the, the place sort of you know, you can almost feel the, the, the ghosts or whatever of, 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 of Schrodinger pacing the halls and those little anecdotes about how he left his bike outside. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's really nice to be here. So we are in Trinity College Dublin in one of the more famous lecture theatres in Trinity College, which is called the Schrodinger Theatre. So you can tell from my accent I'm Irish. I spent a lot of time in Dublin. It's great to be back here. I didn't do my degree here. I did my degree in a rival institute um, further north uh, on the north side of Dublin, but um, Trinity College is the oldest university in Ireland. It uh, was founded in 1590 something, 1591, 92, something like that, uh, by Queen Elizabeth I. Um, it reeks of history, it reeks of um, oh, the, the various prestigious people that have sort of walked these hallowed halls. It's, um, it's a nice feeling to be in, in this, this lecture theatre. I lectured here once before, back in 2003, but I actually didn't remember that until I walked back in again. It's called the Schrodinger Theatre, and you might think that's really quite strange. Why is it called the Schrodinger Theatre? Schrodinger wasn't Irish, he was, he was Austrian. What was the link with, with, with Schrodinger in Ireland? Actually, the first Taoiseach of Ireland, somebody called Eamon de Valera, invited... The first what? Taoiseach. What's that? So the first effective Prime Minister of Ireland. Uh, invited uh, Schrodinger, and spent a lot of time and effort actually get, getting Schrodinger here. De Valera, unlike most of our politicians now, was a very, very keen amateur mathematician and was very, very fascinated with what Schrodinger was doing in terms of quantum mechanics. Very keen to get him over here to form what was called the Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies, which still exists. While he was in Dublin at the Institute for Advanced Studies, Schrodinger gave a number of lectures, both public lectures and also lectures to undergraduates. And what he's really famous for um, are a series of public lectures on, on the topic of what is life. It's called the Schrodinger Theatre because of Schrodinger's close ties with Dublin, because of Schrodinger's love of the place. He spent close to 20 years here, uh, not in Trinity itself, but in the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies, but he had very close ties with, with, with Trinity. Um, he was a very strong lecturer, um, very, um, drew huge crowds for the time. They had to run them twice sometimes because demand was so, so strong. Of course, Schrodinger was a huge name, so he, he attracted very, very high-profile scientists, and de Valera was keen to bring in those scientists and run various different workshops and conferences and meetings. And um, so this theatre, as I understand it, has been uh, around since about 1905. And very many um, famous scientists, just not least with Schrodinger, but also people like Walton, have, have, have lectured in here uh, to, to generations of students. Schrodinger is one of the fathers of quantum mechanics. You'll have heard his name, um, Schrodinger's cat, of course, uh, which is, I guess, is the most famous and um, paradoxical thought experiment that, th that there is. So Schrodinger is, is, is really revered in terms of his uh, knowledge of quantum mechanics and his contributions, of course, to quantum mechanics. And he set the foundations. Iggy McGovern, who's a, a professor here, told us that the security guard who worked, who patrolled the grounds here, used to get very, very, very irate at Schrodinger um, because Schrodinger would keep bringing his bike in and leaving it in the, in the, in the hallway and he'd continually have to rebuke him for this. So he didn't really um, stand on any sort of um, convention, given of course that Schrodinger was a Nobel Prize winner, that didn't um, influence his ability to berate him at all. This is a classic. This really is a classic, and I actually read over the last couple of days, I knew we were coming to, I was coming to Dublin with Brady, and I, I read this again. I, I've got to point out that actually it's not my book. I saw it on the shelves of our school manager, uh, somebody called Glyn Archer, and I said, oh, I remember reading that as a student a long, long time ago. Would you mind if I borrowed it? Very embarrassed to say that was two years ago, and I still haven't given it back to him, but I'm glad I, hold, I held on to it. The the, the, this book is based on a series of lectures. To a large extent, it's a transcript of those lectures. It's called What is Life? Physical Aspect of the Living Cell. Now, that's perhaps already surprising for those physicists among you or those people among you who are familiar with Schrodinger's name in terms of quantum mechanics. You might think, well, that's biology. What's he doing walking around with that? As you can see, it's based on lectures delivered under the auspices of the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies at Trinity College Dublin in February 1943. Now, there's some debate 
Some people think it was actually in this lecture theatre, others argue that. Given that the estimates of the numbers in the lecture theatre were of order 400, if you look around, you're not going to get 400 people in here. So it's possible it wasn't here, but Schrodinger has certainly lectured in here. Like so many Nobel laureates, after they get the Nobel Prize, they start thinking about the wider picture and the broader things and really thinking about the very deep questions. Schrodinger was fascinated by what is life. Um, where does life come from and you know sort of our equilibrium state for a physicist the equilibrium state of me and Brady is death that's when we're at equilibrium and we're held out of equilibrium and how are we held out of equilibrium and we're obviously some degree of ordered structure and how do we turn all this entropy and disorder around us so th this was a huge huge influence on so many uh, biologists, biochemists who were struggling to try and understand um, the, the nature of, how, of hereditary um, factors, the nature of genes, the nature of chromosomes, how genetic information was trans transferred. And Schrodinger was actually, I think these ideas, he was building obviously on other ideas and there's nothing really new in here, but what he did is when he brought all those different streams together and um, couched it in physical terms and couched it in a way I think, well, I imagine that biologists and biochemists weren't really thinking of at the time and he was a huge huge influence on Watson and Crick and they've, they've, they've admitted that in terms of their um, discovery of, of DNA and, the, and their, 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 their work on DNA in terms of um, how genetic information is passed from generation to generation. They're meant to be squares. Perfectly periodic Imagine they're just floor tiles. You just lay them out, da, 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 boring. Absolutely zero information content. Well, not quite in zero information content, but a very, very low information content. Low entropy, low um, interest value, or low interest level, because all you need to know is, right, I've got a block, and all I want to do is repeat that, and you know exactly how far I have to go in this direction and this direction to reproduce the whole thing. What Schrodinger was saying, well, how could we have all this complexity of life? Because at the time, solid state physics, and it's true even to this day, undergraduate people who do degrees in physics focus on perfectly periodic crystals. That's the majority of our time is spent on these type of things. And it's very important because a lot of the properties of matter depend on those periodic crystals. But from the point of view of complexity, from the point of view of information content, this is really, really dull. And what Schrodinger was saying was, well, we need something that's aperiodic, something that's, it's a great shame we can't um, go to the Book of Kells. I don't think we're allowed to film the Book of Kells. But when we look at the Book of Kells, that is so rich. It's completely the opposite of this, completely aperiodic. But it has such content, such, inf such rich information content. And Schrodinger realized that's really what we needed, was that aperiodicity. And then when Watson and Crick came along, what's really, really, um, of actually gobsmacking is that, well, it's the, 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 the aperiodicity is not in the, the atomic structure itself, it's in how you pair up the base pairs, how you pair up the adenine, guanine, thiamine, cytosine, and how they link together, and that's the, where the aperiodicity comes in. So 10 years before Watson and Crick made the discoveries, 10 years before they did the crystallography that got the structure of DNA, that wonderful double helix structure that you're so um, used to seeing crop ups is right across all the, the, the imagery and science, Schrodinger was preempting this. Got to stress, again, that in that book there's nothing really new, but for a physicist to read that, and again, I've, it was two years since I last read it, and I came back to it, and you can read it, it's a very... Um, quick book to read. You, it doesn't, you know, take a long, large amount of time. It's written in a very, very elegant style. And I think it was that elegance and that ability to put the ideas across so simply and so with such impact that um, really um, had such an influence on so many other scientists, both in physics and outside of physics.